This is a fast update on the Southern California quakes. Coso Volcanic Field had over 10,000 quakes this week. Also, the today's 4.5 magnitude at Ridgecrest was four minutes after the San Francisco 4.3 earthquake. Now, I'm, I'll give you a link. We're reading from the USGS site for Coso Volcanic Field, the July 11 update from USGS says the California Volcano Observatory detects neither significant change in the volcanic system beneath Coso Volcanic Field, Inyo County, California, nor impending volcanic activity following the Ridgecrest earthquakes. The seismic swarm activity continues within the volcanic field, but as of this time of this announcement, intensity of the seismic swarm is declining the Coso geothermal field contained within the Coso volcanic field overall has not experienced heightened levels of seismicity when compared with previous swarms. The current activity at Coso can be considered distant aftershocks or triggered earthquakes. The 7.1 magnitude on July 5th occurred on a northwest trending fault oriented towards the Coso area and it is common for large earthquakes to cause aftershocks beyond the actual fault rupture. The California Volcano Observatory will continue to monitor the situation for any sign of volcanic activity and provide updates as warranted. Background on Coso Volcanic Field. The Coso Volcanic Field, located on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada Mountains, at the northern end of the Mojave Desert, about 64 kilometers or 40 miles, north of Ridgecrest. The field covers about 150 square miles, primarily with a naval air weapons station at China Lake, and is comprised of lava domes, lava flows, and cinder cones erupted over the past 250,000 years. The most recent eruption was about 40,000 years ago. The U.S. Geological Survey will continue to monitor these volcanoes closely and will issue additional updates and changes in alert level as warranted. And for the definition of alert levels, you can see what the link says here below. And the day before that, they had this. The seismic activity that started on the evening of July 5th at the southern margin of Coso Volcanic Field in Inyo County, California, continues at the rate of about 600 magnitude 1 earthquakes or greater earthquakes per day. The activity was triggered by a magnitude 5.4 earthquake at 9.19 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, located 20 miles east-southeast of Little Lake, which itself was an aftershock of the magnitude 7.1 earthquake that occurred about an hour earlier on the 5th of July, located 70 kilometers north-northeast of Ridgecrest to the south. The intensity of the activity at Coso is gradually declining. Of the approximately 1,600 earthquakes detected at magnitude 1 or above since July 8th, only 12 have been magnitude 3 or above, with the largest two registering 4.1. The current activity at Coso can be considered distant for aftershocks or triggered earthquakes. The 7.1 on July 5th occurred on a northwest trending fault oriented towards the Coso area and it's common for large earthquakes to cause aftershocks beyond the actual fault rupture. No ground deformation indicative of volcanic activity has been detected, and there is no imminent threat of an eruption. The California Volcano Observatory will continue to monitor the situation for any sign of volcanic activity and provide updates as, to, as warranted. Okay, now here it says the largest two registering 4.1 magnitude. Well, today we had a 4.5. We also had a 3.8 and a 4.1 south from the 4.5. The 4.5 was the most northern era uh, of the area. And I'll leave a link below so you can see it on the maps. Um, also, again, I'm very astonished and dismayed that the geologists have not mentioned the fact that this activity is on the Warren Lane Fault. And that fault, as we said in the previous videos, is 
a fault that is very dangerous. It runs from the uh, corner of the garlic fault at Ridge Crest and goes all the way up towards the uh, Juan de Fuca plate. It makes that turn up towards the Cascadia Arc. And it's the Warren Lane fault that is thought to at one point perhaps uh, become the edge of the Pacific plate, uh, the edge of the uh, continental plate. Once, for example, San Andreas uh, and that area uh, is no longer, perhaps. Um, it's thought that the Warren Lane fault system could split California from the continental United States. That's how, that's what I read in articles written by geologists. Okay, and also we saw in the previous videos before this one, the one having to do, for example, with the San Francisco rock by 4.3 and quakes today. Okay, you'll see that. SoCal 4.5 quake and San Fran 92 4.3, same time on connected faults. San Andreas and Walker Lane, you'll see that two videos before this one. They're locked in. The San Andreas and the Walker Lane are basically locked in by the Garlock Fault, which turns to the south. That whole area is locked like a zipper. And that's why when you have pressure in the Cascadia, you have pressure and release of, of uh, pressure and giving an earthquake uh, to the south of South California, at Ridgecrest, for example, or when you have an earthquake in San Francisco, four minutes later you have one at Ridgecrest in Southern California, as we saw today. And it was not small, it was a 4.5. So this has to be updated. This uh, CASO USGS uh, page is no longer the largest, it's no longer 4.1, it's 4.5 that we had today and others that were uh, bigger than the 4.1. So uh, that's where we are today, and I'll leave links below for you for this, and I'll go into more detail on the cost of volcanic field so that you can see it, what's going on with the earthquakes and what kind of uh, history it has had. And here you'll see the map of the area. You'll notice that the garlic fault is all the way to the bottom, and on the west here, cost of volcanic field, and on the west, where you have basically the border of California, uh, because it borders around the, uh, the mountains, the Warren Lane Fault goes all the way from that area, all the way up northwest, past Long Valley Caldera, all the way Lassen and Mount Shasta. That is all that area is the border of the Warren Lane Fault system. So it basically it's the whole of California from the south all the way to the north. And this is all propagating north towards the Cascadia Arc system. It's pushing, it's locking, it's all locked together. That's why when you have, you had the, the uh, earthquake uh, north of Vancouver Island, July 3rd, a 6.2 magnitude. 13 hours later, you had an earthquake of 6.4 at Ridgecrest down below. And that happened again in 2015. You had the same exact position north of Vancouver Island, the same size earthquake, 6.2 magnitude. And 24 hours later, you had a Ridgecrest, South California earthquake, mid size, about 3.5 to 4 magnitude. So it's not a coincidence. It's because they're locked in. All these faults having to do with the Warren Lane fault system is locked in with the San Andreas through the Garlic Fault, zipped and locked. And I'm very dismayed at the fact that the geologists have not talked about the Warren Lane system at all, at all. But we have found information, and we are talking about it because it's part of this whole mess. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, 
and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.